So I am uh, currently a research fellow for psychological medicine at um, Auckland University and also teaching health psychology. Um, my background is uh, research, mainly research onto um, adults and children with intellectual disability and autism and I've also worked in the UK um, on, on a TS project that I haven't got time to go into um, today. So I just wanted to compare where um, Peter showed us earlier that he came from King's College in Cambridge. Um, I worked at King's College in London and this is where I was based. They had that beautiful picture of Cambridge. Camberwell is um, a little bit of a different place. Um, so that's why I was actually working here for about eight years doing my PhD, doing some research into TS. I now live in Auckland, which looks like this every single day. There's always Orca in the, in the Gulf. Um, but since I've um, been to New Zealand, I haven't been able to do as much TS research as I've, I've wanted. Um, I actually arrived in, in New Zealand about a week before the last conference. And I really wanted to come to the conference, but I, I just didn't have time in the end. And then I met um, Helen and Janet a couple of months later, maybe, just for a chat and a drink. And before the end of it, I was on the committee and signed up, so here I still am. Um, so yeah, when I was um, at King's College London, I worked on TS2000, which was a study set up in the year 2000 that looked at about 125 um, mainly children, um, who were about 125 people who were diagnosed with TSC during the year 2000. And I was involved in following up those people, um, it would have been um, about six or seven, no, it would have been more than that, ten years later, ultimately. So children who were, who were around the age of, of ten and some of them were old adults and I was visiting them at home doing lots of assessments to find out whether they might have symptoms of autism and, and ADHD. We haven't yet published um, a lot of that work, but it really inspired me to work with um, families affected by TSC and to see what we could do in New Zealand. And I've been really lucky um, to be able to do that to a very small extent. Um, so this is a, um, a diagram that my summer student did. I was really lucky. I got some funding from um, the University of Auckland to um, have a summer student for 10 weeks. Tonya and Murray also helped me out a great deal with, with my summer student and she was able to start a small piece of research um, in New Zealand. But before that I thought we'd talk a bit about TSC research, maybe some things you don't know. Um, so just a bit of history that's about skin lesions, but did you know that one of the earliest medics to recognise and describe TSC actually died in New Zealand, that's our claim to fame in terms of TSC. <laughs> He, um, I believe he came to New Zealand because he had tuberous, not tuberous cirrhosis, that's what we're talking about, <laughs> tuberculosis, <laughs> um, and um, so came to enjoy the sea. Yeah, we also have, now Russell Snell worked at, at Cardiff, um, he was one of the people that was in the team that discovered the TS1 and TSC genes, he's now a professor at Auckland University, so we've definitely got some links there. Um, and what I did a couple of years ago was just looked at what was happening in TSC research. And this graph is a little bit out of date now, I need to update it. But it shows how many um, journal articles, scientific articles, have been published on <coughs> TSC over the years. And as you can see in the early days when TS was first discovered, this number was really, really low. The small, oh, I can't get up there. The smaller numbers, because my special interest is in autism, those are the ones published in autism. But you can see how massively it's grown. And in the last, um, the first five years of this decade, there are actually more um, articles published on TSC than there were in the last, um, the, the kind of half a decade before that. So we're really, or the decade before that. So we're really seeing a massive growth in research on TSC and journal articles about TSC. But I still think there's some, some issues that the international community really need to think about. And one of them is where that research has taken place. So a great deal of that research has taken place in the US and Europe, the UK, Australia and New Zealand, hardly any. So we do need to make some improvements there. And we also can look at what the kind of tr um, research that's being carried out. And the focus seems to be a lot more on um, treatment than it is on, you know, diagnosis. So, but if, if we can't recognise and diagnose early enough, then we can't treat. So I think we do need to think about um, diagnosis. Lots on neurological, so mainly epilepsy. Hardly anything on the kind of things that Peaches has been talking about 
um, really not as much on that kind of psychiatric, neuropsychiatric aspect. Only seven of the articles published ever have talked about service provision. <laughs> so it's something that's really being neglected. Only 19 have really talked about those kind of psychosocial, mental health and educational. Only 49 of those um, articles, we're talking about thousands of articles here, have, included, have looked at families, <laughs> which is at the core of everything that we talk about. <coughs> Only 27 specifically measure, mention parents or siblings, other people that are affected by TSC. Hardly any articles on adults. Most of the research is on children, but if you think about the lifespan, there are many more adults living with TSC than there are children. We know, we know it's important because that's when we would like to be diagnosing TSC and getting those early interventions, but there's so many adults living with TSC. We need more research that, that meets their needs. Only one article has ever referred to ageing among TSC, mm -hmm. individuals with TSC. So as a result, we don't know anything about... We think that TSC doesn't shorten the lifespan, but people seem, might be at higher risk of, of dying because of um, things like epilepsy. But we don't know anything about what happens to people as they get older. Unlike in Down syndrome, we know there are uh, problems there. We don't know anything in TSC. And really, yeah, neuro neuro neurodevelopmental difficulties, which is my speciality, I haven't really been focused on, although that is, that is changing and I think that will change more. So when I, I was really lucky that TS, um, TSC International funded me to go to Washington for the research conference. And this was the, the things that I noticed. There was a lot of basic science there that is all preclinical. I have no idea what that stuff sells and things like this, not, not really that interesting for me. So these are the key things I picked out. So um, cannabidiol CBD for epilepsy. Um, it, there are currently trials going on that will be um, assessing the effectiveness of that. The effect of Everolimus on TAND <coughs> and neurocognition. I think we're, we're not going to be able to get there in terms of, you know, just us carrying out in research in New Zealand. But I am quite interested in some of these things that were picked up I picked up on in the conference and that Petrus has talked about. So I think it would be really interesting for us in New Zealand to understand what clusters of tanned we see in our, in our communities, whether we can develop a tanned, whether we can work with Petrus to develop a tanned checklist app administered would be amazing if, we, if everyone can have an app that they fill in themselves. And then one of the things that we're really interested in and really interested, TSCNZ is really interested in helping out with is trying to improve access to multidisciplinary clinical care for people with TSE to kind of get people on a, a clear pathway where they get to see all the different clinicians they want to see and they're being managed and their symptoms are being kept under um, surveillance as they should be. So just thinking about, um, about that, what I wanted to do first of all was just find out, see if we could find out a bit about people with TSC in New Zealand, because currently we don't know anything apart from previous surveys that we've maybe done. So my summer student was able to put together a very small amount of data. So what we did was looked at the, um, um, the IDI, which has just completely escaped <laughs> what it stands for. It's the data infrastructure. What's the first I? It's completely yes. escaped my mind. So well, basically, every time you go to hospital, some information about you is recorded, and it's ex we can access uh, uh, researchers can access that information. And so what we were able to find out is that among the people in New Zealand who had been to hospital, had a hospital appointment in the last 10 years, we could see that this was their... Um, so th there might be multiple appointments that people had. This is not the number of people, this is the number of, of, of appointments or hospital visits. But it's kind of what we would expect to see in terms of gender, about 50-50, in terms of ethnicity. We don't really know anything about TSC among um, Māori or Pacific peoples in New Zealand. Most um, hospital-related events, so appointments, um, relate to children. So again, a bit of a, obviously a contrast there. Most ad people with TSC will be adults. Um, but it obviously it is at that age that it's really important that, that children might be seeing more, having more hospital appointments. When we look at how, who's seeing, what specialties are seeing people, most um, appointments are with the paediatric medicine. We've got some people seeing urologists. I think that's mental health services. Um, 
a much smaller number of seeing those labels don't actually work, but there's lots of... <laughs> most is, is that kind of paediatric medicine, which is what you would expect, given that most of the appointments are for children. And if we look at what the primary diagnosis that people are being treated for, um, I think, so TSC forms, comes under the category of congenital abnormality. If we think about some of the other diagnoses <coughs> that people are being treated for, it's things like men, hardly any for mental health and behavioural problems, even though we know that affects a large number of people. Um, and then it, it kind of increases as you think about more different systems. So that's just a little snippet of something we've been able to do. We haven't published it yet. But what we did do as well is think about how we might develop. We've got our TSC guidelines or the guidelines that we've translated to TSC. And one thing we'd really love to do is simplify that down into a, a, a kind of surveillance checklist, a one page if we can. Um, summary document that you can take with you, you can look at how old you are and you can look at when you had your last assessment, your last scan, um, your last um, visit with a, with a specialist and find out well, when is it we should be having a next visit. So that's something we're trying to develop at the moment and Tonya was really instrumental in developing that with us. Um, what we would like to do is a, an online survey with all the members or um, as many people as we can in the TSC community in New Zealand to, to find out what they think about that, that um, checklist. Is, does it look right? Does it sound right? We're using the right language. We'd love to get it seen and designed properly so it actually looks nice. This looks very clumsy. This is my idea of graphic design. <laughs> I'm not an artist. I can't dance and sing. I can dance. I can dance. I can't sing. <laughs> And then we'd love to test it and eventually get it, get it wheeled out. Maybe even it's us that disseminate it. We give everybody who comes in contact with us this one-page checklist that they just take with them to their doctors. They fill it in, they keep it filled in, it, it goes with them throughout their lives. So just thinking about some of the research options, at the moment it's just me thinking about doing this TSC research. I can't do it on my own, I do need help from you guys and from all the clinicians and other people we've spoken to. So some of the things we would like to do, some surveys, what do people in the community want us to be researching? Who are the people that we, are our members? Um, what difficulties are they having? We'd like to survey practitioners as well to find out if they've even heard of the guidelines and if they're using them. We are, I'm, I'm looking into link with, with a Minds for Minds project, which is done at the University of Auckland. It's an autism project, but it also looks at broader neurodevelopmental difficulties. Um, and we'd like to get more information from the, the kind of national minimum data sets. We can easily get that. It's kind of free as well, so we can hopefully find a way of getting that. Can't do any of these things without funding, unfortunately. Um, but so these are some of the ideas that I picked up from today as well. And if, you're, um, if you go through your pack, whoops, you should have one of these. It's the survey about, or it's a link and a QR code with the survey for about today, evaluating today. And there's opportunities on that survey to tell us what you would think about today, apart from anything, and you know, what you would like us to be doing. So if you have any thoughts about these particular things, this seems like, to me anyway, this is just my views of what I was um, getting from some of the things we talked about and some of the things that seem to particularly interest people. So it would be great to hear your thoughts on those. That's it for me. If you are interested in, you know, in being a, an expert to help me out with any research, to develop research projects, I've actually set up my own email address that's TSC Research. <laughs> I did that ages ago and I haven't got around it. Or you can email me. Um, using my TSC address. Um, so please do fill out your, your evaluation form, your survey. Yes, but if, if you really, we would love you to do it online because it's much easier for us. If you can't, you can um, take away a copy. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you mainly to Helen, but also the rest of the committee and the speakers today. I think it's been an amazing day. It's been really fantastic and this was organised, we haven't been funded at all, this has been completely funded by TSCNZ, it's been a lot of uh, volunteer hours have gone into organising today and to me I think it's gone amazingly, it's gone run very smoothly and that is mainly thank you to Helen, so I'd like everyone to give her a round of applause.